Hey guys, sorry I cannot be in class today, um, but I've got a video for you. As usual, you will take notes, and the sub knows exactly what I expect out of your notes. So make sure that you follow along closely, you take very detailed notes. Everything that I write on my paper is what you should write on your paper. There will be a couple questions at the end where you have to pause the video and try them on your own before um, you can move on but we'll get to that later towards the end of the video. So we've been working on multiplying fractions and multiplying mixed numbers. And what we're going to do now is come up with a strategy to know if our answer is reasonable and if it makes sense to make sure that we didn't make any silly mistakes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna think about multiplication as a form of scaling. I know this is kind of hard to see, but I'm gonna circle it. Okay, scaling is the process of resizing a number when you multiply by a fraction that is greater than or less than one. Okay, the definition here is not important, but I wanna share that with you because you will hear that vocabulary word from time to time throughout the rest of your math career. So let's do an example problem before we get into what it actually means. So first we're going to multiply two by three different fractions that are all greater than one. Okay, this is important. All of our fractions are greater than one. So we have two times one and one fifth. Well, we can change this into two over one, times one times five is five, plus one more is six, so that would be six over five. Okay, this would be equal to 12 over five, which would be two and two fifths. Okay, and then we have two times one and a half. If you'd like to write that as an improper fraction, and that would be three over two, which would get us six over two, which is equal to three. That one you might be able to do in your head. Um, I'm just gonna write down the whole strategy to make sure we know how we got there. We have two over one, and that would be times four, seven over four. Two times seven gives us 14. And one times four gives us four. Okay, four goes into 14 three times. And then we would be left with two over four, which I'm going to reduce even further to three and one half. Okay, so now we're gonna plot them on the number line. So first I'm gonna mark where two is, okay? That's where we started at when we started with the number two. Now I'm going to plot our three products, okay? So two and two fifths, Put approximately there, three, there, and then we have three and a half, right? So we're gonna compare our products and circle one of these. So, circle whether the products are greater than, less than, or equal to two, okay? Notice all of our products are greater than two, okay? We multiplied by fractions that were greater than one, and our answers all ended up being greater than two, which is what we started with. So, down below, multiplying a number by a fraction greater than one results in a product that is greater than the number, okay? This is really important. This is something that will really help build your number sense. If you can get this in your brain Especially with fractions, it will really help you figure out if your answers are correct, if they make sense, or if you made a silly mistake somewhere. Let's do another example. Okay, We're going to stick with the number 2, and we're going to multiply it by fractions that are less than 1. Okay, So first we have 2 and 1 fourth, or 2 times 1 fourth, not 2 and 1 fourth, which would be 1 half. If you'd like to see that worked out, there you go. It would be 2 fourths, which simplifies to a half. Okay. 2 times a half, half of 2 is 1, so that one we should be able to do mentally. And 2 times 5 eighths, I will work this one out for you. We get 10 over 8, which would be 1 whole and 2 eighths, which we can simplify further to 1 and 1 fourth. Okay, same thing here. We're gonna plot our points. So I'll do the two in red. 
And let's plot our product. So we have a half, we have one, and then we have one and one fourth. Okay. Notice that all of our products are less than two. Okay. Same thing, there's a connection. We multiplied by fractions that were less than one, so our products were all less than the number two. So multiplying a number by a fraction less than one results in a product that is less than the number. Same thing with the previous page. Really, really important. If you're multiplying by a fraction greater than one, your answer is going to be greater than what you started with. If it, you're multiplying by a fraction less than one, your answer is going to be less than what you started with. So the old rule that they shared with you in elementary that multiplying always gets a bigger number is not actually true when it comes to fractions. Okay, so let's talk about it here. Go ahead and pause it and I want you to make your own prediction. It says predict whether the product of three and four fifths is greater than, less than, or equal to three. Okay, make a prediction and then we will come back when you're ready, you can hit play again, and we'll go over the answer. All right, you should have made a prediction by now. So, if we have three times four fifths, our product is going to be less than one, or not less than one, less than three, because four fifths is less than one. All right. Now, predict whether the product of 2 and 2 and 1 fifth is greater than, less than, or equal to 2. This will be greater than because 2 and 1 fifth is greater than 1 whole. Okay? Notice that our sign less than matches up. Greater than matches up. Okay. On the next page, here's where you are going to pause the video and you're going to try them on your own. Okay. They do want you to try these without multiplying. Now, if you have to work it out to figure it out, since we're just now practicing, you can, but go ahead and do your best without multiplying. Give those a try. And when you're ready, you can come back and we will go over our answers. All right, hopefully you had enough time to give these a try. If we have 2 times 1 eighth, 1 eighth is less than 1, so our answer is going to be less than 2. Okay. 10 times 3 and 1 fifth, okay, this is greater than 1, so our answer is going to be greater than 10. We have 1 and 3 fourths times 4, okay, our fraction is greater than 1, so our answer is going to be greater than 4. 12 times 5 6. 5 6 is less than one whole, so our answer is going to be less than 12. 1 and 1 third is greater than 1, so our answer is going to be greater than 2. Okay, 3 fifths is less than one whole, so our answer is going to be less than 6. Okay, let's give the algebra ones a try. We have 1 and 2 thirds. That is greater than one, so our answer is going to be greater than four. We have eight times four fifths. Four fifths is less than one, so our answer is going to be less than eight. One times five, okay? Well, one is equal to one, so our answer is going to be equal to five. And very last, six times one third. One third is less than one whole, so our answer is going to be less than six. Alrighty, when you are done with this video, I'd like you to show the sub your notes and then they will let you know what your assignment is for tonight. It is an IXL assignment. They will let you know what your SMART score is that you need to get to. Um, scratch work is optional. Um, write down what you need to, but try to do it without actually multiplying. Make sense of the numbers and go with less than, greater than, or equal to. If you have questions, go ahead and email me. Otherwise, I will see you guys tomorrow.